Okay, thanks for coming. Um, my name is Marilyn Belizia and I'm a young ambassador of UFIGF. And for this program, I should interview an expert person to, to this program. So welcome. Thank you very much, Marilyn. It's great to be here with you. I am already involved with this uh, youth, youth ambassador program. It's, it's, it's really good. So I'm glad to participate with you. Okay, thanks. Okay, the first question is, um, I will the IGF um, secretary article for, for the proposal of your group, um, the CNMA and your priority area like um, global connectivity and digital inclusion. Do you take um, the education of people to know or manage the internet and those infrastructure are among the most important things? Yes, actually, if I understood you correctly, Merlin, I consider uh, in the internet infrastructure and the access to this infrastructure and to have um, a good provision of internet service, it's, it's, uh, it's really, really important. And not only um, a, a good access, but also meaningful as it's now, uh, um, it's now the way that we refer to the internet services. So I think it is very important because as in any house, you can have, you can have any house if you don't, don't plan the foundation, right? And very strong foundation. You can actually can have any kind of house uh, in the air. You need something to support that. And it's the, way, the same way in, in internet. We do need infrastructure to support all the services. Otherwise, we're not going to be able, or if the infrastructure is just for one part of the population, and in, in it, it's not accessible for the other part, then the internet services and all the great things that we can do there will be just for that part of the population, not for the whole world, which is the intention. That's why it's really, really important talking about discussing and hopefully achieving what we call universal access to this infrastructure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, the second question is, with the different uh, advancing in technology and in the internet, um, a young people like like me can invoke this unique time to raising our necks of the um, policy network or policy makers. Uh, can, can you repeat a little bit more uh, about the question, Marie? We, um, with, with the different advancement in technology and in Correct. the internet, young people who or young person can devote this unique time to raising awareness of tech, um, of policy network or policy makers. Sure, sure. Um, if I understood you correctly, um, it is regarding on how the young people can provide this kind of awareness to these different policymakers that we have globally, regionally, locally, right, uh, Merlin? It's more or less the idea of your question, right? Yes. And I do, and I do believe, totally believe that yes that young people not only can, but must intervene and must provide awareness to different stakeholders in different levels. Because what uh, young people is, is, is dealing with is the future for, for you, right? The, fu the future for young people. Anything that involves young people in, in, in final decisions will be good and it's important because we are talking about their destiny, right? The destiny of our children, the destiny of, I, of, I, of our uh, descendants, etc. 
And in this particular matter, um, no matter how, how high the evolution of the technology have become so far, because yes, indeed, we have a lot of uh, technological evolution that we can see, but um, there are certainly some aspects some important aspects that we need to uh, take care of. Um, from one side, as I mentioned before, uh, young people need to advocate to increase and to obtain, to achieve this universal access near in the future. Because young people are not talking just from, for themselves. Um, because as you, as you may realize, Marlene, you and I uh, are both together with half of the population in a very privileged space, right? Because we have the chance to use this kind of tools, but we have another big part of the world when we also have a lot of young people that actually don't have this kind of access. So yeah. it's really important for you as young to advocate also for them. So it's really, really important. So besides this, of course, there are some other aspects that young people need to um, be involved in order to provide this kind of affordances. In this case, regarding how we're going to use this kind of services and hopefully to mitigate all the threats that we can find also when we use internet. So in both ways, in all the aspects, I think the role of young people is really, really important. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the third question is, in rural, rural and remote area, for example, in Haiti, there are times when we try to help um, help people to learn dif different ways to use the internet and to create a community network in those community that has no access. They still think um, we come to to away their culture and as as well as their way to life. So do you think that is, um, it is not the grace to, to exchange of having internet is in with global con connectivity? If, you understand what I'm if, if I understand you correctly, you are mentioning about um, the scenario where we have in Haiti and in any other countries, usually in remote areas, in rural areas, we also have usually the traditional communities, right? Yes, in our countries. Yes. And uh, when you asking about what happens with uh, the, the projects or initiatives like community networks, when we try to bring internet connection to these communities, right? That's the scenario. Yes, and if I yes. understood you correctly, what you are asking is about how this kind of um, technologically advancement, this kind of new approach to provide internet services to communities could affect their way of living, right? Could affect yes, yes. their culture. That's your question, right? Yes. Merlin, well, I will say when we are talking about this, we are uh, usually um, analyzing the concept of colonialism, right? Yes. To, yes. And um, I, I will say that it, it happens not only regarding internet services. I think it happens in different aspects of our way of life. Just uh, as in uh, in IT or Haiti, in Bolivia or in many other countries, we do have really, really traditional communities that are are so far from the rest of the of the country, from from the rest of of cities, that actually they 
keep very, very strong their, their way of living. Actually, they, they don't even have access to electricity, right? They don't even have access to, to health services. So to, to many other things. And uh, I am talking about this because I want you to reflect about something. Uh, you can think now that we have recently this kind of pandemics as coronavirus. You can think in, 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 in one moment that maybe some sort of disease could affect this kind of, of communities, right? That usually they treat them by themselves using local or traditional medicines, right? right. Mm -hmm. But what happened if they face a very, very difficult situation with a, with a very new disease that actually exterminates, that actually kill their community? What the government should do, what the others should do about it? I mean, it's okay to look at them to, to see, okay, poor, poor people, but they, they, they do have their ways. So, let's wait for them to solve them. <laughs> if they can, that's good, they will survive. Is yeah, that will be, will, they, will that be a good position from a government or the government will try to get, okay, we have universities, we have evolution, we have advancements regarding health. We actually can have the, enough medicines to treat these people and hopefully to save their lives. So do we have to do that? Do we think that it is good for them? Even though they don't want it, do we think as community, as country, that it's good to do something for them? I think it is, right? Yes. Because otherwise it will be a very, very difficult position. I mean, let's wait what happens by themselves. If they say, that's good. If they don't, what, whatever, <laughs> right? Yes. And the same happens with, with, with other aspects of our lives. And this particular case, is it good as, as government, as different private sec, uh, different sectors, private, academia, et cetera, et cetera, to do something in order to provide them connectivity, is it good or not? So the fear wouldn't have to be, the fear don't have to be that we are going to affect their way of living, that we are going to have to affect their culture, no. The idea should be, okay, let's use this tool that we call internet. Let's, let's use this ecosystem. Let's use this, this, this particular fantastic um, tool that we have and we call the internet, this new communication media, you know, to help them actually to not only enjoy their well of living and enjoy their culture locally, but actually a way to show the rest of the people, the rest of the world about them. So internet, like in any other aspects, is a tool, right? I mean, it's an ecosystem because it's, it's always, I, I always defend that position. Internet is no more uh, just, just a simple tool. Internet is more than that now. It's part of our ecosystem for those that we have it, because there is the other half that they don't have internet. But for those that we have it, we understand it's part of our lives. This allow us to do so much, right? And that's good. It will be good also for the people that right now don't have this kind of service, right? But it should be used in a very good and responsible way. So in the part internet, in the part, that is considered as a tool, it's a neutral tool. It shouldn't be used to, as you were saying, diminish or make these communities forget about the culture of things like that. On the contrary, they should need to understand the good things that internet can provide for them in order to increase their culture, to in, in strengthen the culture and their way of living. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, for the next question, you you answer on part of the next question. Um, I will ask you this question. And yes, do you think that country? I say um, I will take an example like Haiti again because that's the country ha as I know. So, do mm -hmm. you think um, country like Haiti with um, 30, 50 point 
3% of the population have access to the internet can inhale the infrastructure and move away by other means so that everyone has access? I, I couldn't understand very well. The first part, yes, in your case, 80. Uh, you were saying that how much of the population you were talking about the percentage? Um, 30, 37.3%. That's the, the, the population that in Haiti have access to internet right now, the internet, right? Yeah. Okay, that's the situation. And what was the question um, regarding the, that situation? Um, the, the country like this, um, they can injure the, the infrastructure and move away by other means so everyone has access. Okay, I understand. What, what other efforts could do the, the, the country in order to provide this access for the rest of the people, right? That's what yeah. you were asking, Marlene. Yeah. Okay, and uh, first I would like to ask you something before answering. Maybe you do have this information, maybe you don't, but let me ask you. Do you, do you think, how, how much of your country, of Haiti, do you think is covered currently by um, internet service providers, particularly the mobile service providers? Can you say, that the internet service providers are covering uh, half of the territory, maybe three quarters of the territory, maybe almost all the territory or just uh, one quarter of the territory. How much do you think the internet service providers, particularly the ones that provide mobile services are covering your country? Do you know a, a little bit about that? Uh, I don't know about that, but I, I can say, um, I can say in, in a meeting, I, I um, listened someone say the government pay a part of, of build of the internet to population can have access, but okay. I think it's true or it is not. Okay, yes, perhaps they, they do, perhaps they do. There is a way to provide this kind of, 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 of services for the people that can support, can pay for these bills. But I was asking you this, uh, Merlin, because what happens in most of our countries in our region, not only Haiti, but also Bolivia, Chile, uh, Ecuador, Peru, what happens is that most of the territory is already covered by a telecommunications provider. Like in my country, I will really say that perhaps one can, perhaps 90% of the country where Bolivians live have uh, some sort of internet service, particularly mobile internet service, already in place in their regions, in their communities, almost 90%. But only 40% of our people is connected. Yes. So it's, it's really strange, right? If we already have most of the territory and perhaps most of the people have the possibility to be connected, why only 40% is really connected? And the answer, and the answer to that, to this question, Merlin, is about affordability. Okay, if you have the money as a part of the community, as a, as a citizen, if you have the money to pay for the service, for the service of this device, that's the problem. Because yes, I can have a phone. Yes, I can have connectivity near me, but, no, that doesn't mean that I'm going to have service because I need to pay for the service, yes. right? And usually we don't have enough money to pay for the service. That's the problem. Yes. So yes. 
yeah, even though you have access, even though there's a possibility, even though you, you, you can have, you can make the effort to get a phone, to get a tablet, to get a computer, it's not the same when we talk about to pay the service to be permanently connected because that will be the ideal, right? That you have a connection that is permanent, no matter if this connection is really high in speed, no matter about that, but yeah. at least to have a minimum connection so you can work or you can study or you can go to your classes, that will be great. Yeah. And we are not talking about 4G, 5G, technologies we're talking about a very modest connection that allows a but with an affordable price with a price that you will not be um, suffering from uh, losing your what we call your package your service package because as you know when we're talking about mobile services the, the problem is that we pay by the megabyte right yes. That's the problem. It's different in your fixed connections, in your fixed connections at the school or that you work. Usually we pay the fee and we have unlimited exchange of information, right? And that's the kind of model that we need to be available in mobile devices. And a, play, a plain uh, fee with an, a, a minimum bandwidth so we can do basic work. I mean, basic work or studying, not high speeds to look videos <laughs> for, for key videos. No, something to study, something to have this kind of dialogue using a, a video conference platform. That would be all, right? And that's something that we need to achieve. And that's a very, very important issue that we need to tackle in the future, in the, in the near future. And that's what our governments need to negotiate with our internet companies. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, the last question is, if someone is de developing a project to, to try to save people in, in country, but this project requires the internet, do you think this project can develop um, the advancement of the internet, even those people aren't connected? I, I can't understand very, very well, dear Merlin, the question. Uh, we are talking about the projects that the people can yes. develop, right? Yes, if, if someone dev, develop a project and mm -hmm. this project need internet, mm -hmm. so, do you think um, this project can, can help to have more access of the internet? Yes, uh, um, let's, say if, let's see if I understood correctly. If we, um, we're talking about projects for any kind of projects? Any kind of project. That, that, that can use internet. Yes. Right? Yes any kind of project that can use internet. And the question is if these projects can succeed, can be successful, can advance these projects, if, if, if the people that, is, that are running this project don't have internet access, that's more or less the question or? Yes, yes. Yeah, if that's the question, Merlin, I will say it will be really, really difficult or it will need more effort. Okay. For the, from the people that it's actually doing the project. Uh, because yes, indeed, not all, but many projects currently um, in different stages of the project need to have internet access. In the, in the beginning, in the initial part of, of when you are developing any kind of project, you need to do a lot of research. And uh, as we all know, it's not enough with the kind of research we used to have in the past when you went to a library, right? And look for different documentations or expect to have a magazine that considering the place we are in the global South and the, the, the sources of this kind of 
the last technology or the last advancement in different fields is usually present in the global north, right? You remember it, it was really hard to wait for this information to come in a traditional media, like printed material, like a printed magazine, right? We needed to wait a lot of time, but that change it totally changed with internet because now with internet, immediately there's something that, there's a magazine that it's issue yesterday. Now you can access to that magazine using internet today, immediately. And just that's just an example, right? Yeah. So through internet, you can go any other library in the world and you can have all the information you need for your research, which is a very, very important part of a project development, right? And then uh, that I will say that's the most, the most important part that a project may suffer because after that, perhaps it's, it's a little bit easier to perform or develop the project itself. Let's say that you are um, actually, uh, let's say that you are developing some sort of cure for some sort of disease that you have in, in Haiti. Okay, a particular disease. Of course, the most important part will be regarding all the research, as I was saying. And yeah. then with all this research, then you will continue, uh, okay, in your labs, in that part, perhaps you're not going to need internet, but you're going to have your lab, you will have all your inputs, and then your, your researchers, your, your health uh, persons, your doctors will be researching about this, about this medicine, right? During developing this project. And some after that, in, in maybe in, in some other moments, this group will love to exchange their advances with somebody of the medical, of the health community around the world, right? So in that case, again, internet will be, again, a tool that we need in order to provide this kind of exchange. So if we don't have internet in that other stage, we will be isolated, right? isolated from the rest of the community. So finally, when you finally have your, your, your new medicine for this particular disease, let's say approved and applied, etc., then you would like the whole world to know about it because that medicine will be able to serve to another community in another region of the world perhaps. How all the world is going to know about your medicine if you, have, if you don't have the media? to distribute this information, right? And again, internet becomes, again, an important part of this whole cycle of the project. I hope I understood your question. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Thank you um, for all. Uh, thank you for your time, your disponibility. And hi, I know now you, we are finished to the interview. And, Fantastic. Uh, yes. I will stop the recording. Sure.